Hi everyone, so I'm going to be doing a third example on how to use use states. So if you want to know the basics of use states, just please watch the other two videos on how to set it up. I'm working in Next.js right now. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to set up the page. So I will import whatever I'm going to Im whatever I'm going to use. So I'll do use state from React. And I'm just gonna export default function. This is how you set up uh, the pages. So right here, this is the basic template of how to set up a page. And right now we wanna set up a use state. In order to do this, we have to do this after this export line and right before the return. So we add it right here. What we want to do is add const. We have a color and change color. And we'll say use state is gray. So what we're saying is the default state for this color is gray. So whenever it starts, it'll always be gray at the beginning. Now let's add some buttons here. And we'll say change to red. So we're just going to return, we're going to um, change the colors on our screen based on the button click. So we'll have one button, another button, and the other button will say blue. And we'll have an H1 change the text color and a div that'll also change the color of the background um, whenever um, we click on buttons so we'll just say box for this one so let's just see what this default template looks like first So I'll open up the terminal and I'll just say npm run dev. So this is what the screen should look like by default right now. Nothing is, the buttons aren't working just yet because we have to add something to it and we just have the default text right now. So the colors aren't working yet because we haven't attached it yet to anything. We just set up the default template. So let's go back to our code and let's actually add some functionality to this now. So button, we'll say on click. So whenever someone clicks on the button, we will want some type of interaction or change to happen. And we're going to call the change color. And when they click on it, they, it will change the color to red. And this has to be on click equal to. And this is just a saying that, and this is just saying that don't execute this until you actually click on the button because if you don't do this, um, it will try to re-render and loop over, over, over and over again for like up to infinity and it will just crash the entire program. So this one is just saying only run this when you actually click the button. So let's add an on click on the actual on the other button below. So we'll do the same, but we're going to change the color red to blue. So make sure I don't forget the bracket there. So you ha should have something that looks like this so far. The two buttons, be very careful about which brackets you have 
and where the brackets are. Um, I'm going to post an, a copy of this code on my GitHub as well, so you guys could double check in case you are misspelling something. But we got the two buttons now ready. And what we're going to do is also add some kind of style here to um, the actual text. And we're adding an inline style. So what we're saying is let's just change the color of this text. And we're just calling the color here because right now it's gray. It will, it will by default be gray. But whenever they click on a button, it will either change to red or it will change to blue. So this style prop right here, this color, is referencing this color right here, which is the one individual color that is saved in the use state, and it's being called. So it will put the color of whatever has been stored there into the H1 style, and it will change that text color. So now let's add the style to the actual uh, div as well, the other div, which is our box. And we'll just say background color background color we'll say we'll use back ticks so we can grab the prop and we're grabbing the word color and we're adding an inline height of 10 and then padding 20. So this is just adding a little bit of style on our actual screen so then we can see the color of the background behind the box text. So let's see what's actually happening in the actual browser now. So this is what your browser should look like. You can see everything is gray because by default we set the prop to the use state to default be gray and it's grabbing that default color and putting it here on the actual text and actual background of the box. So now, whenever we click on change to red or change to blue, this should change the colors below as well. So let's go change to red. So you can see here, change the text and the actual background too. Let's change to blue. And you can see here, it changed the text color and it changed the background color as well. So depending on which option you click, it will start to change and update the property value that is being stored in the use state. So again, this entire code will be on GitHub as well. So make sure you understand that these do not execute unless it's actually being clicked on. This is what these brackets are saying with the arrow function. It's saying only actually run this when you actually click the button. And what's happening is once they click on it, it calls change color, which is in our use state, and it updates change color to whatever value we pass in the brackets here, which is it used to be gray, but now it's being replaced by red if we click this button, or if we go to the other button, it's being replaced by blue. So you can go back and forth and toggle between the two. So in order to actually grab the actual property value, the one value that's being saved in the use state, we actually have to use the word color. And color we use here in the heading. So we're using in style. Color, color is just the text. So color, text, we're saying that it is either gray or if we changed it already, it'll either be red or blue. Then here we got the style again, but we got it for background color. And just be, um, cognizant of this how it's spelt. This is in camel case. So if you uh, think back to how CSS is set up, usually there's like a dash in between like this and it's all lowercase. But here in Next.js when it's inline styling, inline styling it needs to be camel case. And what we're doing is we're just doing back ticks here. So then we can actually grab that property value and still have it as a string quote. Um, because that's what we need is we need it around these quotations like this. So we are putting color here and it needs to be some type of string. And these back ticks do represent that it is a string. If we don't, then that'll represent it's like an integer type, which is not true because when we write a certain value of color, 
it is a text, so it has to be a text format. That's why we're using backticks, so we can actually call this color property, which is right here in the use state. And you can see here the background color will then change based on whatever color is saved within the use state. And we just add a little bit of height and padding, so you'll just see a lot more of the actual background. And again, if um, you are having issues, I will be putting this code on GitHub and you can reference it directly.